look, the reason people are poor is because they're not earning enough money. Well, how do people earn more money? They become more productive. How do you get more productive? You acquire skills and you have capital. You, 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 your, your employer provides you with capital that makes your labor more productive. And because you're more productive, you can earn more money. And that lifts you out of poverty. So it's free market capitalism that lifts people out of poverty. And so the smaller the government is, the more capitalism we have, the more wealth we can create, the more employment opportunities we can create. Government just gets in the way. There's an opportunity to be compassionate without like the demand for you being compassionate by the federal government. And if people had yeah. to spend less money on the government, there, there's opportunities for them to donate more money to charities. And this this yes, would be like people, a better this would be a better way of managing our money and our charity. Look, when people give money voluntarily, their own money, they don't want it to be squandered. They don't want it to be wasted. I mean, whenever you give the charities, you always look at the charity and you want to know, hey, if I give you a thousand dollars, how much of it is used in bureaucracy and how much goes to the recipients? And Isn't you can look shocking? at their books and you can say, hey, we're going to take 10 cents to run the charity and actually 90 cents is going to go to the to the people that we're trying to help. Right. But with the government, it's the other way around. They take in a dollar and only 10 cents actually goes to the people that need the money. The rest of it is is absorbed in the bureaucracy. There's no incentive to be efficient. Charities have to be efficient or nobody will give them money. Mm. Government has no incentive to be in, in, efficient because they take your money. There's no voluntary interaction there. They take your money from you and so they can be as inefficient as possible. But then the private charity wants to help people out so they no longer need the charity. The government wants to keep people impoverished so they're in constant need of the charity because that way they can get their vote. The government knows if they steal money from Peter and pay Paul, that they'll always get Paul's vote. And that's what they're concerned about. They want to keep people entrapped in poverty so that there'll be reliable votes. Is that, is that what they want or do they just want to maintain this system that they have control over? Because if they just released everything to the public sector, like if they, they if, well, if, 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 or the private sector, right, if they, but if, and, if they and, just and, release, know, but if they, everything from policing to the, the water purification, to everything they do, if they just went, in, instead of the government handling everything, they just allowed it to the private sector, what... How would we manage yeah. whether or not they were doing the good of the people overall? Like, that's what everybody's worried about. What everybody's worried about is big business assuming this monopolistic, gigantic monolith that, that crushes everything before it and pollutes the rivers. That's what we're worried about. So the idea of the government stepping in for business is to keep business from only growing and not growing with concern for the consequences of all the other people around it. That's where everybody gets real suspicious, Right. When you agree? Yeah, and, 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 and they shouldn't be. And this is something that always kind of bothers me, that uh, people just attribute sinister motives to private businessmen, yet they think politicians are angels and just there to do the Lord's work. Right. I mean, there's just as many greedy people who go into politics as who go into business. In fact, probably more. But there's a big difference. See, I have protection. Because if a greedy person goes into private business, his greed can only help me. Right, because the way a business grows and gets bigger is by selling more products and services. Well, why would I buy those products and services? I have to like them. I have to think they're better than the products or services that some other businesses is offering me. And I have to value those goods and services more than the money I'm voluntarily exchanging to get them. Right. So the beauty of the free market is that you have all these businesses who may be greedy competing with one another to best satisfy my desires, my needs, to make me happy. And, and if they don't make me happy, if they can't satisfy my disease, I don't buy their products. So I don't have to be worried about a greedy businessman who wants to make money because he can only make money by making my life better. On the other hand, you take a greedy person and you give them the power of government, they can make my life miserable. They don't have to get me to voluntarily do anything. They just take my money by brute force and they just do to me whatever they want. So where you have to fear greed and power is when it's in government, where it can actually harm you. Okay, not I, in the private sector, where I, it can help you. Now I, I know agree. someone's going to say, well, what if there's a criminal? <laughs> what if somebody is stealing my money? Yes, they're yes. violating the law. And we need government to protect me from thieves. But businessmen that are honestly convincing me without fraud or deception, but are being honest and I'm buying their product, 
that, you know, their greed doesn't help me. Right? It, it, it doesn't hurt me. It only helps me. We need government to protect people from a business getting out of control and demonizing people. But it doesn't mean that capitalism in and of itself is a, a demonic thing, a bad thing. It's a good thing. All the Wall Street bailouts, that's not capitalism, right? right. The banks that were over leveraged in 2008 should have been allowed to fail. Investors should have lost money. None of this is capitalism. Bailing out companies that should fail is not capitalism. Do you think it's corruption? Right? Do you think it's a crime? Like wh when, when you say it's not capitalism, then what is it? Well, I mean, you can call it statism, a crony capitalism, fascism. So, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can describe it, corporatism, but it's not free enterprise. It's not capitalism. Failure is an important part of capitalism, right? Because if you look at the science of economics, what is economics about? It's about how do you satisfy unlimited human desires, unlimited demand with limited resources, right? We have scarce resources. They're not, you know, infinite. We have so much land, labor, capital. And so we have to figure out how to organize our resources in the way to satisfy as many de de you know, demands as we can. And, and so businesses compete with each other for those resources, and the businesses that combine them in a way that they can generate a profit, that means that they're adding value. That means that the goods they're producing are more valuable than the resources they consumed in the process of producing them. So that's a good thing. But when businesses are taking resources and their products cannot recover the cost of production, they are squandering our resources. And those businesses need to fail so those resources can be freed up to be utilized more effectively by some other entrepreneur doing something else. So we need companies that can't generate a profit to go bankrupt. That the, 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 the profit and loss is the thermometer that tells you if you're doing the right thing. If you're making a profit, keep doing it because you're creating value. If you're losing money, then stop. You're destroying value. Your business is making us poorer. So the market is trying to function so that we can have an optimal amount of economic growth. Then you have the government coming in and, and deciding to subsidize businesses that it doesn't want to fail, you know, because, oh, we, you know, we might lose some votes. You see, there's a there's a concept about the seen and the unseen. And politicians are concerned about what you can see, because when the politician bails out a company and they save the jobs of these workers, everybody can see that and they can take credit for the jobs they supposedly save. But what you don't see are the jobs that were never created or might have got destroyed because the government misdirected capital from where the market would have put it to where the government wants it. So we destroy productive jobs in order to save non-productive jobs. That makes us poor. But the politician takes credit for the good that he supposedly does, but he doesn't get any of the blame for the bad that nobody can actually attribute to his action. I mean, if you have a company that gets enormous, just absolutely enormous, and they control all the jobs in a the region, they could really dictate how much money people get per hour, and they could make it really poor and terrible. And you could say that people have the, the right to just leave or find something else or create a better future. That is possible. I mean, they, they can do that. But if something well, controls, assuming, but hold Joe, on a assuming second. The if something controls in your example, an enormous got area. really big, right? Right. Not because it had some special monopoly granted to it by the government, right? It didn't get a big government subsidy. It was just commercially effective. The government effective. didn't have a law making it illegal to compete. Right. right. If this company got so big in a free market, that meant it got really big because it was just providing the best uh, services. Uh, to its customers, but also if it was able to employ that many people, it must have been offering those people a good deal. Otherwise, they wouldn't have taken the job, right? Because businesses not compete hold, for hold two hold things. That's not necessarily I mean, true. That's not necessarily true. Because if well, there was no other jobs available, if, if you live no, in a there place... there would have been. Right. There, would, it, have there been. would have been some jobs originally. I mean, there's no way that there's just one business in the entire community. But if you're born right? into this and you're 16 years old, you're shit out of luck. And that corporation does have control over you. If you're if you're born into it, if you're 16 years old, okay, you're in high school and you get your first job, and the only job is at Walmart. You're working at Walmart. If that's all you have, you know, it's, it's well. Assuming Walmart is the only potential employer, now I, I would say that that's not going to be the case. It's, it's I mean, usually the, the not reason the case. that you're not getting a job when you're 16 is probably because the minimum wage is making you unemployable, and 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 we can get into that discussion because I'd like to talk about minimum wage, but first. Let's talk about um, how businesses compete for workers. 
just like they compete for customers, right? Because I have three businesses, I hire people, right? And I just can't pay my workers, you know, a, a, you know, a, a, a tiny wage uh, because they're not going to work for me. But don't you if agree there should be a minimum wage? There that are in a- demand. There's plenty of people that are bidding against me for those same workers. Right. And so I have to pay the market rate. I can't just underpay them. They'll go work someplace else. So I understand. But if, do you, do you if, think there should be a minimum wage? No, there should be zero minimum wage. Wow. That's interesting. And we discussed that before. I know. But I, I still the reason that I don't think there that. should be a minimum <laughs> wage is because I think individuals should be free to accept employment opportunities that they want to accept. See, the minimum wage doesn't hurt businesses. It hurts individuals that have low skills, right? And, and that's always the, the problem. When you, when you have people defending the minimum wage they are, or opposing minimum wage hikes, they always say, oh, it's going to hurt businesses because, you know, it's going to increase their labor costs. You know what? It doesn't necessarily increase their labor costs because they don't hire as many workers. Right. They hire skilled workers instead of unskilled workers. They automate. They find ways to do without workers. They outsource. Uh, they, they, they hire people in other countries. The minimum wage law hurts the most low skilled people. And they tend to be young people, teenagers, minorities. Uh, that's who get get hit the hardest. You know, before we had all these programs, you know, the, the black teenage unemployment rate once upon a time was actually lower than the white teenage unemployment rate. Now it's like double or triple as high. But before we had all these laws, it was actually lower because they got disproportionately impacted by the minimum wage law, which prices them out of work. I mean, when basically, were these here's laws a implemented? Kid, hmm? When were these laws implemented? Well, Minim- the minimum, minimum wage, wage didn't laws? really start until the Great Depression. Right. So it started, but it didn't apply to there were a lot of jobs that it were exempted from it. So it, it really started kicking in more in the 1960s. And then it really you know, started uh, can, can I uh, ask you playing, this? Playing role. Has anybody ever tried to have no minimum wage as an experiment, like maybe well, a town or a, a, a city? Well, first of all, we had no minimum wage before it was implemented, and we had much lower rates of, of unemployment, real unemployment. And but this you was look the at countries Depression. that don't have the minimum wage, uh, there's not that many left anymore. I mean, most countries have made this mistake because the minimum wage is good politics because it sounds good, right? If right. you're for the minimum wage, it sounds like you care. Right. Oh, right. yeah. We, you know, who, is anybody against, you know, people working for low wages? No. OK, so it sounds good. Right. But all you do is you destroy jobs and you destroy employment opportunities. But there are countries like Singapore, for an example, has no minimum wage. I feel like it, there could be a, a minimum wage and we still hold the same values that you're talking about in, for, in terms of competition to keep people from getting fucking shitty with their employees. Have you ever seen an employer like yell at their employees or like be in like one of those uh, corporate gathering situations where someone has a, a lot of control over their employees? Now imagine if that guy was making all the money and he was only giving these employees a dollar an hour and making them well, like but, live but in they poverty. Would quit. But they, it, what it's if not they have slavery. Not, I, I agree you, you with you. Only most remain likely at your job they quit. if you like it, if you think it's the best alternative. Look, people quit all the time because they can get a better job. Right. So by definition, if the best job I can get is the job I have and nobody will offer to pay me more money, then I'm not underpaid. If, if nobody will pay me more, it's a free open market. There's all kinds of employers out there. And remember, you're free to work for yourself. Nobody forces anybody to accept a job. Everybody can start their own business. Everybody can be self-employed, right? So if you don't think your boss is paying you what you're worth, then quit and, and, and start your own business. 